former immigration officer and first migrant British ambassador and chairman of Migration Watch UK. There we go. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Great to have you back on the show. So, is this going to happen? <laughs> I share in Naya's scepticism. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, if it does, really, I'd like to know a little bit more about the practicalities of it. You know, how are they going to be flown out there? Who's going to be looking after them when they are there? What's going to happen when they go through the process and it all comes to an end and they're refused and turned down? It just, uh, to me, it seems like a headline-catching little announcement. And it's interesting that this came on the back of uh, the latest surge, which is now um, three over three times the number coming in so far this year than came in the same period last year. So I, I just wonder, really, whether the government has thought it through. And secondly, if they have thought it through, um, what is it that persuades them that it's actually going to work? However, I, I have no problem with the principle of overseas, uh, overseas uh, centres where their uh, applicants are being uh, considered. That that's fine, but it isn't in itself enough. I'm afraid overseas processing centres are fine, and it worked the Australians, but in this case. What's going to happen really to those who are considered inadmissible? And that's what the legislation, for example, is suggesting is, is going to happen. Will they be still considered? Will they be taken to Rwanda? What happens with those who, uh, frankly, having been considered, are denied uh, asylum? Will they still be flown over? Will it all be done? quickly? Are the Rwandans going to be looking after them while they're there? So lots and lots of questions that I think the, the, the government needs to answer and address, really, before we can say whether this thing will go, is going to happen and whether it's going to work.